We will deal with polls, interrupters, security agencies warn as they deploy officers to various parts of the country. And we we'll discuss PDP's preparations for the February 25th general elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacol. Ahead of Saturday's presidential elections and National Assembly elections, security agencies, including the armed forces, police and the Department of State services, among others, have vowed to deal with anyone who attempts to subvert the general elections. At a joint conference in Abuja, the Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General Tukur Gusal, said security agencies are prepared to use strong force on anyone caught trying to subvert the general election. He said security agencies are determined to ensure the conduct of peaceful general elections. Also, the Commissioner of Police, Federal Capital Territory Police Command, Dr. Sadiq Abubakar, earlier directed the deployment of 17,401 personnel for the presidential and national assembly elections slated for Saturday. He revealed that the command had divided the FCT into nine sectors, each to be manned by an assistant commissioner of police to monitor uh, operations adding that the division was to ensure adequate coverage of all parts of the territory, especially the suburbs and challenging terrain. Well, joining us to discuss tonight is Dennis Amakri. He's a former assistant director of the DSS. Mr. Amakri, so good to have you join us. Good evening. Uh, I'm not sure we can hear you. Okay, but... Ah, great, great, great. Um, let's start by looking at, um, you know, feeling the pulse of, you know, Nigeria right now. We see that a lot of people are coming into the country, inter interestingly, um, to cast their votes, those who are living, uh, living in diaspora. But then there seems to also be that fear and doubt as to if the elections really would hold. Um, do you, have you heard, um, you know, anyone's, you know, say something like, well, we're not sure these elections will hold. They might be postponed or there might be violence. Why do, you, why do you believe that or why do you perceive that people are, you know, giving out this kind of fear? You know, anytime there is, uh, I hope you hear me now. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. You know, at the time for uh, general elections like this, and this particular one is very, very crucial. So um, a lot of people will be traveling around and coming, but... Remember, we're also in the age of fake news. A lot of people uh, would wish that uh, the elections don't hold so that they can uh, do whatever they want to do. But uh, I, I, I am very, very sure it will hold. The president has said it will hold. INEC chairman has said it will hold. And the security agencies are ready. Interesting. Uh, let's talk about the peace accord. This was signed yesterday by the presidential candidates in Abuja. Um, of course, Mr. President was also um, there. Uh, the president had advised that the candidates contesting respect the choice and voice of the electorate. Now, we've also seen pockets of violence here and there. We also saw, because of the Naira situation, we've seen um, people get very violent. And then, of course, some of these protests had been hijacked. And we've seen uh, in a door state where trucks were bringing people to come and, you know, cause mayhem. Um, again... The average Nigerian who's naturally scared would not want to come out and, you know, cast their votes if these are some of the things that are leading up to election. Now, we always hear security agencies tell us that, oh, all hands are on deck, it's going to be watertight security. But these are mere words. What is the action that should be matching these words of encouragement or hope that security agencies continuously give us? I think, I think they are going to walk the talk. Because uh, you, you uh, about some two, three days ago, you have the Nigerian Navy. In fact, everybody's involved with the military. The Nigerian Navy is coming out to do a roadshow. And uh, just to tell people that, look, we are here. Have the confidence to come out and vote. You know, because uh, we've never had this kind of high number of registered voters before. You know, so uh, the military, uh, the Air Force is also on it because they are uh, going to help in distributing um, uh, electoral materials to interland, far-flung areas. You know, so we, we, we are very sure police is ready, 
uh, the DSS is ready to give all kinds of intelligence. So I, I think this one is different from what we'll be used to. And uh, we hope that it will go on well. Um, let's talk about what's happened in the southeast of the country. We saw a situation um, um, where, a, a, I think, a senatorial candidate uh, for the Labour Party was not just gunned down, but then he was burned in his vehicle. Now, we also know that the southeast has been a hot spot for the past few months, even from last year. Also, one of the good things that we've heard today is that Simon Ekwa has been arrested by the Finnish police. Um, and I, I'm guessing that the next line of action would be to bring him to Nigerian authorities, but that we, we would allow for that to lie. Um, for those hot spots, especially in the southeast, what do you expect would be the situation of things? Because I'm not expecting magic to happen just so elections can uh, happen. It, yeah, it is not magic. Uh, what uh, the DSS does is to look at these hot spots. They know the hot spots. And then they will go ahead and then keep an eye on those places. In fact, uh, in Lagos, there have been raids, you know, about some people who have been hiding in some different kinds of places, possibly, you know, to cause problems. So this mop-up is going on across the country, you know. So it's a sad event when you have a senator, a senatorial candidate in the East, you know, being uh, burned down and all the rest. Uh, I think people really have to sit back and start reviewing their emotions when it comes to politics. Mm. Politics is supposed to be a fun thing, you know, and then all of us will be dancing and doing whatever I want to do, and then on voting day, people will decide not to start killing people. Let's look at um, the Naira situation. I want to tie it to issues of insecurity. Now, when the CBN came up with this policy, many have kicked against it. In fact, certain politi uh, politicians and uh, political party candidates thought that this was directed at them. And we've seen a few of them make a U-turn and say that, oh, well, it's a great policy, even though it's biting hard on Nigerians. But the most interesting thing that I've noticed is that there's been almost a very loud silence coming from the kidnappers and nobody's asking for ransom. Why do you think that is? Because there is no money to give to them. <laughs> they also know that um, if they take any hostage right now, uh, remember, number one, they have to feed them. In fact, uh, there are situations where they have to go and buy medicine for sick, for sick ones. Because those hostages are their meal tickets. So to carry them and say, okay, your people should go and bring 100 billion, they too know that it's very, very possible. That means they will be taken care of. Uh, the people until either they die or they let them go. So I think uh, the hell breaks on them. But there are deeper meanings, deeper meanings for kidnappers to put their, you know, should I say suspend their activities for now. I think that the security agencies are still watching mm. uh, what that deeper meaning is. Mm. Because it's interesting that all of a sudden this calm um, and then now the new terrorism of sorts or the new where we're having more problems is cult clashes and, you know, a, a few fights here and there. Um, is, it, uh, is it safe to say that these things are sponsored, man-made, um, and maybe some politicians have a hand in it? Of course. It's man-made and some politicians have a hand in it. Some politicians have already asked them, you know, you go to some states and then you find out that they will not allow you to campaign. You go to some states, they are born, they are tearing off other people's posters. And you go to some states, they burn down the car, you know, in the north. We've had situations where cars were burned down. You know, so these are man-made. That's why we are saying that people should be matured enough to run a political campaign. Uh, the like you mentioned earlier, the peace accord has been signed, but um, the leaders have signed. Some of their boys don't even know what the peace accord is. As far as they are concerned, we are going to win. You know, so um, I think it also behoves on the candidates to talk to their people. They talk to their people. Uh, if you try and try and you don't succeed, you try again. 
So there's no need to kill everybody because the people you are going to even kill are Nigerians that, if you win, are going to be your citizens. So it does not make any sense. Uh, talking about intelligence and, you know, um, security, if we, like you have said, that these things have the hand of ESO, um, you know, in, in most of the cases that we have, especially what's happening in the southeast and some parts of, you know, um, the south and, and the north. Um, what is the intelligence community doing about this? Because there has to be some, yes, intel, but what are they doing with the intel? Because now it looks like these guys know when to start and when to stop, and they're doing it at will. We've seen these people attack a presidential convoy. We've seen them go as close as the city center. These things have happened. Uh, we've seen them go to the NDA. I mean, we can go as far back as 2021. But all of the things that have happened, these are attacks that have been calculated. And when 2023, yet to be able to deal with the situation, if we do know or have an intelligence agency, what are we doing with the intel that we've gotten, gotten or gathered so far? Well, the thing is that um, when they gather intel, Usually the process is complicated. They disseminate. They disseminate to people who are going to activate it. You know, so if the intelligence is timely and it gets to like the police, for instance, coming from the DSS, sometimes they could go for a joint operation, sometimes the police alone or the military will go with them and then they will take care of that threat. Now, the thing is that uh, we are facing an asymmetric enemy whereby you don't know them, you don't know where they are, although they've been able to locate some of them in the ungoverned spaces that we have in places like Samfara, in Niger State, and stuff like that. So, usually you can hear that, uh, of course, when the military goes around and uh, decimates some of them, you know, and uh, you find out that uh, they, they pull down or they regather or regroup themselves and come back again. But it's, it's, a, it's a living threat with us. Mm. Uh, that threat lives with us. Mm. Um, I think we're being joined now by Bala Zaka. He's a security expert. Mr. Zaka, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you and good evening to everybody. Good evening. Uh, let's talk about security uh, around the elections. Um, just like I said to Mr. Macri, there are fears. The Everybody, of course, is... Uh, very excited. People are more resolute this time. People want to vote. We're seeing people come from outside the country all in a bid to cast their votes and make it count. But um, just as I said earlier on, we've seen the police security agencies, you know, um, talk tough and read off the riot act. But half the time, nothing really can counter some of this, you know, the pockets of violence that we see on election day. What will make February 25 different? from every other election that we've had in terms of security and safety of the voter? Well, uh, so many things will make this uh, election different. And uh, so many things will make or oh, should make Nigeria in the interest of the sub-regional or regional name of Nigeria, the continental or oh, continent image of Nigeria and the global image of Ni Nigeria to allow peace to reign. Because there is this saying that the seed of growth and development can only be planted on the soil of peace. In like manner, the seed of good political governance can only be planted on the soil of peace. And we as Nigerians have everything that it takes to make sure the kind of soil that we are going to present this time is a soil of peace, so that the proper seed of political governance can be planted. We need to have it at the back of our minds today that Nigeria is not only the black nation within the global community. Nigeria is highly respected. And two days ago, I think the head of Commonwealth Mission, led by former uh, Tabo Mbeki of South Africa, came to Nigeria 
and other global leaders have been talking to Nigerians, appealing for peace. So it is now left to us to choose whether we will want to be remembered as a country that has all it takes to set and lead the continent of Africa in terms of politics, in terms of education, in terms of security, and in terms of technology. We have everything in our own capacity and within our own containment to allow peace to reign. And whoever got crowned to lead this country, or whatever set of leaders that the Almighty crowned to lead this country should lead us in national interest. Mr. Zaka, it's always very easy for us, and that's the same thing I said, Mr. Mr. Amaki. We, we talk a lot about these things. We say, oh, the world is watching, blah, blah, blah. But does the average politician, especially the one who's power hungry, the one who's hellbent on making sure that they win by crook or by hook, do they care about this international prominence or what the rest of the world or the rest of the continent think of us? Well, whichever uh. way people look at it, at the end of the day, the politicians are among us. The new generation of leaders will come from among us. Those who those leaders will be, will be children of some people, will be cousins of some people, will be nephews, nieces, uncles, and aunties of fellow citizens. We already know that, yes, whether we like it or not, there are some people, I don't want to say they have crisis or trouble in their DNA, but there are some people that will want to test the resolve or the peace resolve of this country. But the good thing is that they are a very, very small percentage. So we must never allow that small percentage that thinks it has, I mean, uh, the control of violence to destroy what has taken so many years to plan. Remember, this is the time that Nigeria hopes to get a new president, new set of governors, new set of legislators, and so many nations who are lovers of Nigeria, and including Nigerians, are also saying that at least in 2023, we must get it right. Remember, we started this political journey since 1999. We're talking about 24 years. But at least this time around, we have all resolved that we want to get it right. Okay. So that small percentage must never be allowed for whatever reason. Okay. In national interest, we mustn't allow them to destroy the credibility of this country and destroy the good image of the majority of the citizens of this country. Okay. All right. Let me come back to you, Mr. Macri. Just piggybacking uh, on what um, Mr. Bala has said. Um, we say that elections are not a do or die affair. I mean, the NOA, civil society, the media, we're preaching this message. But then the body language, the messaging and the campaigns and some of the things that these politicians say is totally different. So um, how do we change that? Because we're not the ones running for office. We're only making sure that we curate conversations that lead to peaceful, free, fair, and credible elections. But if these people who somewhat think that they're powerful and they want these seats at all costs continue in this regard, what should the law be doing? Because again, that's another you know, issue that Nigerians are having to deal with, justice. Yeah, it's true. Um, you see, we, we have a, yesterday, something happened yesterday, when they were signing the peace accord, you know, and um, you you can see that um, there are up to about 18 presidential candidates. You know, 18. And then, of course, in the audience were about three presidents uh, from foreign countries, some of our own retired uh, presidents, former presidents, and then, of course, a lot of people. The whole world was looking at Nigeria. And then, of course, we, we want to run we want to choose a president, and then we have up to 18 people, you know. Some of these people already know that they are not going anywhere. They are not going to, they are not going to win, you know. But they have decided to 
come into the fray whereby you either scatter the votes or stuff like that. I think it's high time we start to learn. You know, it's high time we start to learn because we will continue to do this and the whole world is looking at us and let nobody think that uh, they can just do whatever they like to win because the international uh, community is looking at us. And when you win by crook or hook, of course, they will be on you, on you right there. Uh, because you cannot be a sole country that lives all by yourself. You know, you have to deal with the international community. So uh, I think the thing is an appeal to all the politicians. You know, I would maybe be very, very happy if by tomorrow a lot of them step down for others, you know, and they say, okay, we think you have more followers, you have better ideas, or if you don't have a better idea, when you win, I'll work with you. Mm. You know, I think that's what we need mm. at this time. Mm. Finally, Mr. Zaka, um, we got a f um, some information um, early today that a group of people in a particular area in Lagos, of course, security agencies are looking into it, um, were taken to a particular place. They were given drugs. They were giving them machetes in preparation for the elections on Saturday. Of course, somebody had tipped off security agencies about this. But this is one that we've been able to detect. And this might be happening in several other places. Um, again, when stories like this go out, it still sends shivers through the spines of uh, the average voter. But here you are. Um, what should be the messaging that every voter should be holding at the back of their minds in order for them to want to come out on election day? Because again, we're having to deal with the issue of voter apathy. And that's one thing we're trying to trump this year. The first thing I want to encourage us as a loyal citizen is that the whole world is looking at us today. But we also need to tell ourselves the truth. In the last 24 years of Nigeria's political journey, or oh, Nigerian gyration in political governance, it is practically clear in this 2023 today, after 24 years, that one political party does not have the solution to Nigeria or a nation's total problem. Mm -hmm. It is also very clear that no matter how visionary a leader is, if he does not have supportive lieutenants, that leader is not going to succeed. It is also clear that in the last 24 years of Nigerian politics and political governance, Nigerian, polit I mean, Nigerian politicians have been practicing the politics of vengeance, the politics of exclusion, the politics of extermination, and the politics of emasculation. And okay. it is very clear that it has not helped us. Mm. This time around, the reason why we are saying we must get it right now is this. Let us practice the politics of total integration, okay. the politics of inclusivity. Okay. And what I simply mean is this. If party A wins by the grace of God, and a candidate of that party is crowned the president of this great country, if in other rival parties, he discovers that the Minister of Finance can come from Party B and the Minister of Sport or Minister of uh, Economy Planning or Minister of Health can come from other rival parties. In national interest, he should congregate them and okay. let us have an integrated governance. Okay. Between you and I, if we have that kind of governance, there will be less fight. And okay. the kind of fierce competition we are seeing and the negative throwing of banter okay. will be reduced. Okay. At the end of the day, an integrated and, and inclusive government will be the one that will be best. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to be pessimistic, but I, I really would love to see that. It's just that I'm not sure. 
if um, the, the kind of politicking that we do in Nigeria if we, we can see a coalition government. But then um, what happens uh, in the future remains to be seen. Balazaka is a security expert. Dennis Amakri is a former assistant uh, director of the DSS. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with me. And um, good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We will take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the PDP's readiness for the coming polls. And of course, we'll be, we'll be joined by a representative and a spokesperson for the presidential candidates in just a bit. Stay with us.